Welcome to the video and what I want to talk to you about today is what to look out for when you're buying a used kayak. I've been through multiple kayaks. I don't even want to count how many kayaks I've had, but I recently just bought this one off Facebook Marketplace and this one is a rare gem. But what I wanted to show you is some of the things that I looked for specifically on this to make sure I wasn't getting ripped off. Hey guys, make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I'm going to give one extremely important tip at the very end of the video. So one of the first things you're going to do is just give the kayak a general overview. Um, look at it. You want to see what it looks like. Is it really abused, really damaged? Um, when one of the main spots that's going to show damage on a kayak to show how hard it's been used is when you flip it over and look at the bottom. So let's flip this over. And like I said, this is a rare gem. So you probably won't find one like this. Um, when you look at the bottom of this kayak, it is pristine. So one of the main areas that's gonna show a lot of wear on a kayak that's been used a lot is on the bow area here where the nose is, and then on the very back, and then really where the main part of the kayaker's weight sits, which is right where the seat is. So like right here, because a lot of times whenever you get high centered on a rock, or something you'll get high centered right here and it'll show a lot of wear there's like a couple very small scratches here um, nothing to be concerned about and the only other spots on this kayak this used kayak that i got are a couple um, spots here where you can tell that it's been tied up uh, or lashed down to like a roof rack or to a kayak carrier so when you would want to be concerned is if the bow has a ton of wear to it and the plastic is really thin. Um, a lot of times if these have a hatch on the front, you can kind of stick your arm in there and get an idea for how thick it is. But if that's really, really thin, it's going to be an area of concern because it might need repaired with some plastic welding and some general repairs to the, the front of the kayak. Aside from the bow, the keel back here in the back is one of the other areas that you really want to take a close look at. A lot of these newer kayaks have this little keel guard right here um, that's a replaceable piece of plastic that is screwed in because whenever you're using this on a lot of rivers or um, you know shallow areas, you might have to get out of the kayak and drag this through. And this is gonna be the lowest area that takes a lot of damage when you're dragging this through. As you can tell on this kayak, it is pristine. Um, there is no damage to this, and I really lucked out on getting this kayak. So that concludes the general look at the bottom. Now the next thing I'll tell you to look for, which could be a big deal breaker, is to look around the scupper holes. You might say, what is a scupper hole? It's these holes in a sit on top kayak that allow water to get off the deck and go back to its little home back in the water of the pond, river, lake, whatever you're fishing, ocean. But the specific thing that you want to look for here is signs that somebody has used a specific thing. And that is a cart that actually inserts into these scupper holes. So one thing with these newer kayaks, especially the fishing kayaks, is a lot of them are heavier. You get all your gear in it and stuff, and they become quite the behemoth to get around. So one solution is to use a cart when you're trying to get it to where you want to launch at. And some of these carts are designed where they have actual pieces that will insert up into the scupper area and that's how it kind of secures to the kayak. Now the problem with this is, is this is an area with a lot of stress that can crack. So you kind of want to observe in this area, you're going to look and see if you see any signs that something's been inserted in there. Um, some people will also use stakeout poles and that is a pole that you would stick through here to anchor into a spot. So just look for that. If you see signs that somebody's used one of those, so you especially want to look for um, any cracks or any signs of damage around the seam of the kayak where the two halves of the kayak were kind of like molded together. So I flipped the kayak back over and we're going to get to this next part. And if this is giving you any kind of value, please consider hitting that like button or commenting down below and uh, just let me know what you think so far. But we're going to get started here around the seat. And I'm not specifically looking at the seat 
that'll be next but what I want to look at is especially with these frame seats is I'm going to take the seat out and get this loose here and I'm going to take this out and I want to specifically look down where the seat sits because sometimes in where the seat actually sits you can get some stress cracks from the seat so look down in where the little channels are for where the seat sits and you're looking visually for any cracks or any signs of damage that could cause um, the hull to fail. So the next part is going to be the seat. Um, more than likely, most of the newer kayaks, especially if you're getting into fishing kayaks, are going to have a frame style seat. So, and what I want to look at on the frame style seat, I'm going to sit it back in here, is you know general condition of it and seeing what it looks like. Um, the main part that's going to fail on these is sometimes um, these buckles on the plastic will get brittle over time with a lot of use and they'll crack. Um, so looking at those plastic parts, making sure that everything is secure, kind of give it a test. Uh, make sure that, you know, on this one it's got this plastic base here. And you're just wanting to look at the general condition of the seat. Um, and like I said before, um, the guy who owned this kayak before um, got it during COVID and really wasn't able to use it. So I got a great deal on this kayak. And uh, if you've been following the channel for a while, I've been through a bunch of different kayaks, but really the main purpose of this kayak is getting out on streams. Um, it's a Jackson Kusa kayak, and I just wanted something that'll get out on streams that can handle those flowing waters, which is the main place that I really like to go fishing in a kayak because now I do have a bass boat that I use to go out on the lakes and enjoy going out on that with my kids. So that's the main use for this boat. So the last part on this to find out whether you're getting a deal or they're just trying to steal your money is looking at all the hatches, um, all the tie downs and stuff and seeing if they're cracked or replaceable. So, you know, on this one here, you know, I can take this loose and then I can, you know, it's got the hatch, all these little tie downs and stuff are intact. So I don't have anything to worry about there. You got the front handle is solid. It's not cracked or none of the fittings are missing or anything. So just like that general overlook of the kayak to make sure that there's nothing on it that you're gonna have to replace. Now, if something came down and let's say one of these eyelets would needed replaced, that could be an easy fix. Um, you could contact the manufacturer and get a rivet gun and be able to fix that, but it might give you some wiggle room on some of the price to negotiate and just make sure that you know what you're getting into. Those really, for me, are the deal breakers when it comes to getting a kayak. Um, you can also consider things like if it comes with a paddle, a PFD, and those kind of things on, you know, wiggling the price around and just look at the paddle and just make sure it's functional and it doesn't have, if it's a carbon fiber one, it doesn't have any cracks in it or anything like that. And those are things that you're going to factor in to the, you know, the price that you offer whenever you buy a kayak. I honestly thought this one was priced extremely fairly and I just gave the guy the, the asking price on what we had discussed before um, because this thing is basically new. I mean, it's honestly, it probably, if I were to buy one new and have it shipped to my house, I'd probably be more concerned about the the shipper damaging the kayak more than what this one is because it's in such good condition. One final thing, if you're looking at buying a used kayak that you wanna look out for, and this could be vitally important to you if you are buying a kayak with a specific purpose, and that is if you're buying a kayak and you wanna put a motor on it, you need to make sure that you get a bill of sale. It's always a good idea to get a bill of sale anyways. Uh, you wanna make sure, you can just buy, or you can get a general bill of sale online just like a a PDF or a Word document and fill it all out, but specifically put the whole ID number on it and make sure that you both sign it. More than likely, you're going to have to get it notarized and all that, especially if you want to get a motor on it. Every state's a little bit different, so look up your state and make sure that you have that because a lot of people these days are wanting to put a trolling motor or a Torquedo on the back of the kayak. And when you go to register your boat, if you you know at, at your local office like they're going to ask for probably a bill of sale 
um, so that you can register that kayak and get that motor on it. So hopefully this gave you guys some value and um, it helps you out to know what to look for. If you have any questions, please consider commenting down below and I'll answer everything that I can on buying a used kayak and uh, things to look out for. I'm super excited to get out on the creek in this kayak this summer um, it would be great to be out there today because gosh I don't know if you can tell I got like sweat on my forehead don't mind the pit stains because it is like a heat index of a hot cat on a tin roof out here and it is like super hot but I really um, am glad to be back making videos for you guys and thank you guys for watching I'll catch you in the next one